welcome to our weekend experience. My name is Erin, and we're so excited to have you with us today. Whether you're here in person or you're watching online, we encourage you, engage with us. Check in on Facebook or Instagram, letting us know that you're here and a part of today's service. And even if you're here in the room, remember, you can share the live stream with your family and friends. Plus, as you're listening to the worship and the message, let us know what stands out to you in the chat. No matter where you're watching today, whether in person or on live stream, take a picture, post it to your social media pages, and tag us. We love interacting with you all. If you're a guest with us, we're so glad to have you. And if you need anything at all, just find someone from guest services. They'll be wearing the bright green shirts, and they'd love to connect with you. Well, we're just about to get started. Enjoy the rest of today's experience. together, all right? Thank you. 
Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaken. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. He's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So why would he fail now? He won't. Let's sing that out. He won't. I've still got joy in chaos. I've got peace. That makes no sense So I won't be going under I'm not held by my own strength Cause I've built my life on Jesus He's never let me down He's faithful in every season
Believers Church. How's everybody doing this morning? We're having such an incredible time worshiping so far. You guys can be seated. My name's Michelle. We're gonna continue with our worship here in just a few moments, but today's a really special Sunday because we get to celebrate with some people who are going public with their faith through water baptism. So can we take a moment? Can we give it up for everybody who's lined up here today? This is such a significant moment for them in their walk with God. We see in scripture, it's talked about as one of the first acts of obedience we take after choosing to follow Jesus. And we like to say here, baptisms are an outward expression of an inward decision to follow Christ. So as each and every person takes that step this morning, let's celebrate with them and let's celebrate big. Let's show them how excited we are as they go public with their faith.
and lay down all of the things that might try to distract us or take our attention off of you. We want to make room for you today. Lord, show us your desires and your plans for our lives. Make your thoughts our thoughts. We just want more of you. This is my surrender. 
Let's go ahead and pray. Father, thank you for this opportunity to worship corporately. I thank you for every person listening to my voice right now. And Lord, here's our heart's prayer. Uh, change us forever as we open up the Bible, as we've worshiped you. Change us forever. And Lord, I thank you for also infusing anyone that needs peace with peace, if they need joy with joy, if they need strength with strength. And I thank you for doing what only you can do, being God in each and every one of our lives. And if you can agree with that prayer, would you say amen to it? Amen. Hey, before you take your seats, find a couple of people you haven't had an opportunity to say hello to. Let them know you're excited to see them. Welcome to Believer's Church. If you're visiting, uh, my name is Joe Caminetti Sr. We're excited to have you with us, and I want to welcome our online campus. I also want to welcome all the men at our campus at TCI Correctional Facility, guys. We're excited about what God's doing in and through you, and we're going to close out our worship by taking a moment to worship God uh, with our giving. So if you're here in the room and you say, hey, I'd like an envelope, simply raise your hand. If you're writing a check, you can make it out to Believer's Church, or BC will do. You see the different ways to give on the screen, and Every time you give, you're enabling us to do what God's called us to do as a church. We exist to connect a city with God, so thank you for helping us to do that. We wanna help people know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. So really, really appreciate it. And uh, while we're waiting, just again, if you want an envelope, just simply raise your hands. And guys, thank you once again for your generosity. It's really, really appreciated. Let's go ahead and pray over this offering. Father, we love you. We thank you for all those that just were water baptized. And Father, we also thank you for all the blessings in our life. Thank you for our jobs. Thank you for every blessing we have. Thank you for prospering our businesses and everything we do. And Lord, we also just look to you as the God who promised you'll supply all of our needs according to your resources. I thank you for meeting every need of every person listening to my voice. And guys, if we can agree with this prayer, would you all say amen? Amen. Hi, I'm Steve. Welcome to Believer's Church. If you're visiting with us today, we are so glad you're here. Our goal is to make you feel right at home. Be sure to stop by guest services out here in the lobby for all things BC. Here you can sign up for next steps like water baptism, explore our connect groups, and find answers to all of your questions with a friendly face from our host team. And if you're joining us online, you can learn more about all of these next steps by visiting believers.cc. Our time together today is designed to help connect you with God in a distraction-free environment. As a friendly reminder, we invite you to set your cell phones to silent or vibrate during today's worship experience. And parents, remember, we exist to see your kids connect with God too. B Kids Junior is a safe and friendly environment for children ages six weeks to five years old. And children in kindergarten through fifth grade also have their very own high energy experience called B Kids. For toddlers to teenagers with developmental disabilities, we provide a safe and interactive setting called Pathways. Now you may still be getting used to the idea of leaving your little one while you sit through a service and that is totally understandable. If you do choose to keep them with you during the message, it's no problem. We just ask you to be mindful of those around you and move out here to the lobby if they start to get fussy. Just find guest services and they would be happy to guide you anywhere you like. This has been Steve. Enjoy the rest of today's experience. All right, I want to welcome to everyone to make room. I'm excited about this series. This is our third lesson. Next week is our fourth lesson, final lesson. And I'm teaching on a subject I've just have never taught on in church. So I'm really, really excited about next week. And I'm not going to tell you what it is. You have to come uh, to hear it. But, but guys, I'm excited about this week too. And I want to just begin by welcoming our Borman campus. And if you're visiting Borman, again, my name is Joe Caminetti Sr. And you just experienced incredible worship there in Borman like we did here. And now I have this privilege of opening up the scriptures 
And if you haven't met Pastor Joe Jr. or Pastor Aaron, they're the campus pastors, they'll be in the lobby. So look for them after service. And I also want to welcome our TV audience. Man, we're excited that you're part of our family. And guys, again, welcome to Make Room. Here's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about making room or increasing our capacity. This is all about increasing our inner capacity. We're going to talk about making room for salvations or people coming to know Christ. And I can tell you as a pastor, this is something that can get off my radar. It's amazing. You can do an altar call every week at the end of each service and, and still go through the week and not think about there are people I'm rubbing shoulders with that don't know Christ. And so this is a message that I love just to stir myself up, but it's going to stir all of us up in a great way. It's going to increase our capacity. And I'm amazed at what God did in my life and my family's life. Um, I met Christ at 19. Many of you know the story, but what was really exciting is within a year, uh, my five siblings, my brother Mike's girlfriend, who's now his wife, Barb, they were still in high school. Uh, and my brother Jim's wife, she was already a Christian but not walking with the Lord. And then my mom and dad, so five, five siblings, sister-in-law, and my parents, they all accepted Christ within one year of me accepting Christ. And it was like miraculous. And, and my conversion was 180-degree turn, as was all of theirs. So um, I'm going to show you why that happened, why I'm convinced it happened a little bit further down in this message but I think all of us want our families to come to Christ, right? And we want our friends to come to Christ. And we even want our enemies to come to Christ, right? They won't be our enemies once they come to Christ. And we want people we don't like to come to Christ, right? Because we'll like them more. And I know there are people that don't like me, but uh, once they come to Christ, I think they'll like me a little better, right? Uh, they'll say, he's okay. At least he's doing the Lord's work, right? So... I have a big idea for this lesson, and this is what I want us to walk out understanding more clearly than ever, and it goes like this. God wants your loved ones in heaven more than you do. And that's, that's saying a lot, because we really want our loved ones to be in heaven with us, right? Well, God wants them in heaven more than you do, and I want to help us understand this more clearly than we have ever understood it when we leave this lesson today. And I'm going to read a scripture to you to help you understand it. And I'm reading this out of the Catholic Bible, um, and, and just in case you don't know it, the Catholic New Testament, Protestant New Testament, are 100% identical. It's just like a, a, one of the many translations the Protestants have. Now, the Catholic Bible, they added four books to their Old Testament that the Protestants didn't, and here's what happened. Their theologians sat down and said, what books should we make the canon? And they picked four more books than the Protestants did, but the New Testament's identical, and this happened in the last three weeks or so. I've run into Catholics in the stores and, and when I'm shopping, and they'll let me know. They'll say, I'm a Catholic. That's the first thing they'll tell me. And then they say, I, love, I watch your show and I love it. And then they always say this, thanks for not picking on the Catholics when you teach the Bible. And I'm, I'm like, that's so sad that they'd have to tell me that, right? But a lot of preachers pick on them, and there's a lot of Catholics that know Christ. And I thought in honor of them, I'd read from the Catholic Bible right now, right? Uh, 1 Timothy 2, verse 1. I urge then, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be offered for everyone, for kings, and for all those who hold positions of authority. Today, we would throw in our, our president, right? We throw in um, Congress, the House and the Senate, even the Supreme Court, right? We pray for them. And I think it's interesting. We pray for them for many reasons, but, but notice what it goes on to say. For kings and for all those in positions of authority so that we may be able to lead a tranquil and quiet life with all possible devotion and dignity. In other words, that our country would be at peace so that we as Christians have an opportunity to share Christ. So we're not in turmoil. Can we agree if we're at war, it's really tough to do a lot of things. And so just so we have peace, right? And so that's one of the reasons we pray, but I love what the Bible says next. Here's why God wants us to pray for leadership. Many reasons. I'll pray for them to have wisdom and other things, but verse three, uh, to do so is right and acceptable to God our Savior. Why? Who desires everyone to be saved and come to the full knowledge of the truth. You know, and I believe in the sovereignty of God. I've taught on it. I love that subject. And I've read books on both sides, you know, predestined that God picks some people to go to heaven and other people he doesn't pick, you know. So I've, I've studied it all. And my conclusion is this after studying everything, that 
Yes, God knows the beginning to the end. He knows who will pray, who won't, who will accept Jesus, who won't. He knows all of that. But when I study it out in the New Testament, and I see verses like this. He wants everybody to be saved, even though he knows who's going to, who's not. God wants everybody. And you look at your relatives. He wants them in the kingdom more than you do. Your friends, people you rub shoulders with at work. He wants them in the kingdom. And I love verse 5 and 6. For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and man. Just one way to go to heaven is what he's saying. Christ Jesus himself, a man. That's God who always existed, who came in a human body, right? Uh, verse 6, who gave himself as a ransom for all. And we know he died on the cross so everybody could come into the kingdom. So think of the price that God paid. That's, a, that's an amazing price that he paid for people to come into the kingdom. And so I, I want us to walk out of here realizing, man, God wants everybody to come into the kingdom. He wants your loved ones in heaven more than you want them in heaven. So I came up with what I call uh, four points. The first two increase our capacity. That means on the inside, they're going to grow our desire to see people come into the kingdom. And again, I, I need that because I, I just forget about it, right? So I need to remind myself and God's going to take all of us to a higher level here. The second two are just some great tips that will help you uh, in, in sharing your faith. But here's the first one, guys. We make room for salvation when we understand what's at stake. So what's at stake? We have to understand what's at stake, right? And here, here it is. You know, on earth, it's more coveted here in this country uh, to have a southern address like, you know, North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida. That's kind of more coveted to go south. And north, you know, it's like, well, it's cold there. Winters are crazy, right? Not maybe as many jobs. So it is just coveted on this side of eternity to live south. But on this side of eternity, you don't want to live south. You, you want to live up north, right? Because <laughs> up north is heaven, and down south is that other place, right? It's like Woody Hayes wouldn't say Michigan. He would just say that team up north, right? We don't want to go south to, to that place, right? And, and all of that is determined on this side of eternity. You, you have to deal with it on this side of eternity. And when, when you're not aware of what's at stake, you won't have this desire to see more people come into the kingdom. But when you realize they have to decide here, uh, it really increases your desire to see people come into the kingdom of God. So you know how my family, uh, within a year's time, mom and dad, my siblings, my, my sister-in-laws, they all came to Christ. My grandmas didn't right away. And I just remember... I wanted them to accept Jesus so bad. I wanted them to say, I love you, Jesus, you know. I accept you as my Savior. And I felt they were super old because I was 20. And I think they were 70. And today, 70 is not old, everybody, okay? But back then, I thought, they are so old. They could die tomorrow. They could die in their sleep. So I nagged my grandmas. I just nagged them. So did my brothers and my mom and dad. We nagged them. Uh, you have to accept Jesus. You can't go to heaven. And we didn't really know how to do it well because we were new Christians. But I just wouldn't get off of it. And they became so angry with me and with us that, uh, I mean, my grandma would say, uh, Joey, I'm not going to make you any more pies, you know, and things like that. They, <laughs> they were just upset with us. And Sunday, and Sunday dinner, Nana came over. That's my dad's mom. She always baked all these pies. Grandma came over, my mom's mom. She always brought veal cutlets, and it added to the meatballs and the chicken and everything and the sausage, right? And we always had pasta. And, and uh, we're all there, and we had some not-so-fun Sunday dinners until grandma's came to the kingdom because we just nagged them, right? And it's because, I, and I don't recommend that, but I just wasn't sure how long they were living. So... I just said, I, I want you in heaven with me. I like you. I want you making me pies in heaven, right? So, so uh, we nagged them because we knew what was over here, right? And, and I just want to help us see that. That's what's at stake. And, and uh, I want to read a scripture. It's, it's the goat and the sheeps. Uh, it's really under the old covenant, this one. Uh, most of what Jesus said was new covenant things, but this is under the old covenant. And I'm not going to take time to teach the whole thing. I just want to show you the addresses that are listed there. And some really cool things about the addresses. Uh, Matthew 25, 34. Then the king, Jesus, will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. So that's heaven. That's up. But can, can you look at this? Heaven was prepared for people. It's prepared for people. 
And God wants all these people to, to come to heaven. It's a place God prepared for people. And I want to see people make it there. But listen to the, the next part of this, Matthew 25, 41, the address. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Now, did you catch that? Hell was not prepared for people. It was prepared for the devil and his angels, those that rebelled against God way back when. It was prepared for them. And God has emotions. The Bible teaches us God has emotions. He laughs. He cries. He has emotions. And when people don't accept him and they come on this side of eternity, and when that final time comes when he casts people, he's going to cry. It's going to be a weepy time. It's going to be a terrible time. And when you understand these addresses, it just opens up your heart to say, I don't want anybody to miss this. And anybody can die just really quick, right? You, some people can die in a car accident, whatever. I just want them to know Christ. So it increases that capacity for salvation. And, and this just puts a, a, a bow on this, guys. Uh, listen to John three seventeen, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. So Jesus didn't come here to point fingers. You're a terrible person. I can't believe what you just did. I can't believe how you live. He didn't come here to do that. Sin's wrong, but that's not why he came. Why? Because we're already condemned, right? We're all sin-stained. And, and so it goes on to say, uh, uh, whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe, listen to this, stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. So what is he saying? He's saying, we're born sin-stained, and whether you're you know, a non-Christian is a professional sinner like I was, I was professional, and, and, and or an amateur sinner like some of you were, right, and others, uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much you sin. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. You're sin-stained. So, yeah, God wants us to be holy and live right, but that's not what's sending you. What's sending you is did you get rid of your sin stain, right? We all stand condemned. So with my grandma's, guys, it was like, I found no fault in my grandma's. Uh, my grandma's only gave us uh, affirmation, you know. Oh, Joe, you're such a bella. Oh, such a bella. What a bella face. And, and that, that's what they did. Sorry about the mic. And, and, and so, and, and then they cooked for us. I mean, there was, I could find no fault in them. Uh, so I couldn't say you're going to the southern address because you're a sinner. Uh, all I could say is you're sin stained, right? And when you understand that, you realize no matter how sweet people are, I've met a lot of non Christians that are actually nicer than I am, right? And I'm like, why? You are so nice. Um, but you still can't go to heaven. You have to accept Jesus, right? And so when you understand that, it increases your capacity. And I have to keep reminding myself of that truth. The second one's also very important. We make room for salvation when we pray for salvation. And some of you might right now just think, over in Borman here, you just might think, man, I don't know how to pray. Prayer is so difficult. Don't you have to go to Bible school to know how to pray? No, it's really, really simple. And here's the rest of the story. Uh, remember how I said I'll tell you why our family had a, such a dramatic conversion. Um, my brother Dave uh, had grand mal epilepsy, and he was on 21 barbiturates a day, and that really dumbed him down. He hardly knew where he was at, and he still had seizures every night. But they kind of kept him from having seizures in the daytime unless he was stressed in any way. And then he'd have seizures right in the daytime. And he would fall down, shake in convulsions. And, and so uh, Hillside Hospital was doing a program for special needs. And he, he got in there and he met some guys there uh, that went to Pleasant Valley and they were part of their young adult ministry. And they led him to the Lord. I didn't know this till later. And, and then... Uh, they invited him to a fellowship. So I remember he was going to this picnic. That's all we knew. He didn't tell us it was Christian. And, and they had a pond there. And my mom and dad never allowed David to leave the house without one of us brothers there to watch him. And he had five of us, so we always took a turn. And, and uh, this day, none of us was free, so we all had little talks with Dave. Dave, don't go in the water. You know with that sun beating down and you sweating, you're probably going to have a seizure. Don't go in the water. He said, I won't, I won't, but he did. He had a seizure, and he drowned. And so we're at the calling hours, and I hear whispers that that's Pastor Len Evans. He's the pastor of Pleasant Valley, and we didn't like him. Uh, we were Catholics. We didn't think anyone could go to heaven but a Catholic back then. So uh, we didn't like him because we felt like it was your church's fault. So, But he came through. He was so calming, so wonderful. And, and then so after all that happened, 
I you know, went to Bible school. I accepted Christ, went to Bible school. And when I came back to start Believers in 1983, I wanted to just go have coffee with Pastor Evans. And so I did. And he told me this story. He said, Joe, your family's conver- uh, conversion was radical. And he said, here's, here's why I believe it happened. He said, we prayed for your family every week, every Sunday for a year that you'd come to know Christ. I said, the whole church, he said, yeah, every year we pray, or every week we prayed for you. And guys, prayer is that powerful. And I really believe that's why we had these incredible conversions. And I love watching people come into the kingdom. And only God can open their eyes. So can I talk to you for a moment about prayer? Just to help you pray at a higher level. And I use this acrostic. It's, it's the word saved. And you see the different things we can pray. And we'll go over those uh, one by one. And I just want to show you how I do it, encourage you to do it. But it's a life changer. And so here's the first one. Send laborers, Matthew 9, 37 through 38. And this is where Jesus said, listen to this. He said, the harvest is plentiful. In other words, there's a lot of people that are really ripe, ready to accept Jesus. But he said, the laborers are few. So he said, pray to the God of the harvest to send more laborers. So I pray this way all the time for us. I say, Lord, I pray this for me. I pray it for us. That every single one of us would be stirred up, Lord God, and, and you would stir us up to become the sent ones, and we just want to ch- preach and share Christ with people. And then I pray, Lord, I have relatives that don't know Christ. Jesus has, or Gina has relatives that don't know Christ. And, and uh, so we'll pray, Lord, would you send a laborer into their path? Somebody they'll respect that can share Jesus with them. So you can pray this way, and I just say, send those laborers, send those laborers, Lord. And I pray this way every day of the week for different things. Like some days I pray for everybody in Washington, D.C., all the politicians, and I lift some of their names up because I know who they all are, and uh, I say, Lord, let there be a revival. Let them come to Christ, and I just begin to pray for them. Some days I pray for everybody that doesn't know Jesus in our valley. Some days I pray everybody that doesn't know Jesus that's related to somebody that calls believers a home church. I pray for it for the whole nation. So uh, send laborers. Here, here's the second one, awareness of sin, John 16, 8. And this is really cool. You know the Bible teaches us that one of the jobs of the Holy Spirit is to convict non-Christians of sin, righteousness, and judgment. So I pray, Lord... Release the Holy Spirit at a higher level. Convict people that don't know Jesus. Convict them that they're sinners who need a Savior. Convict them that there's righteousness they can have and they're unrighteous. And Lord, convict them that there's a judgment day coming and they'll stand before the living God. And I just pray, Lord, turn the heat up. Lord, turn the heat up. So I don't pray, Lord, get them. I pray, Lord, convict them, right? Turn the heat up. And that's what happened to me. Lou shared Christ with me for about three months. One day he called me, said, turn on. I want you to watch this show. I watched it. At the end of the show, I just knelt down and accepted Christ. I'm telling you, when I got into that third month, I just felt the flames I just like I was feeling the flames of hell. I felt so sinful, and, uh, and, and, and I didn't realize how the church was play, praying for me and how Lou was praying for me, but you just begin to pray, God, make them aware that they're a sinner who needs a Savior. And then this next one is so important, the visor's off. And this is 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4. Here's what the Bible says. If someone doesn't know Jesus, it's because the God of this world has blinded their minds. So you have to accept him here, but he can blind our minds. And you know how he does this? Uh, he's been working on us since we were kids. And he does it by creating our belief system. And what we believe will determine whether we listen to someone or not, right? When they say, hey, I want to tell you about Jesus. I don't want to hear that Jesus stuff. Are you a Jesus freak? I already have a church. And, and so I always pray, Lord, I ask you to tear down any wrong beliefs, Lord. Tear down secular and religious beliefs in their life. And I just begin to cry out for God to do that. And God does it. I cry out for that to happen in Washington. You know, there's a revival going on in Washington, D.C. amongst politicians. There's a ton of them coming to Christ. And and sometimes we look at our world and think, oh, uh, it's fallen uh, just apart. And, 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 and yet, guys, I'm telling you, uh, God can do a work. And I'm just praying for God to do that work, Washington, in our country, and in our lives, right? And then you pray for this one, entrance of the heart unlocked, Acts 16, 14. And, and uh, this is where God opens your eyes up. So uh, with the blinding of the mind in the parable of the sower, the Bible says, uh, the word is sown on hard ground. That's somebody that has wrong belief system. And it says the devil comes immediately and steals it. So it can't get here. This is where it has to get. So after I pray to tear it all down, then I pray, Lord, open up their eyes to see Jesus. 
And uh, there was this woman in the Bible. She was a really super wealthy businesswoman. She, saw, she sold purple cloth, which in Bible days was high end. I mean, only wealthy people could buy purple cloths. And she was super wealthy. The Bible says one day Paul was preaching in her community in the county square, the, country, the city square. And she stopped and listened to him. And then it says she was a God-fearer. That means she believed there was a God, but she didn't know Jesus. And, and it says God opened her eyes up, and she accepted the message Paul was preaching. And only God can do that. Remember what Jesus said to his disciples? Who do men say I am? And they said of prophets and this and that. And then Peter said, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. And what did Jesus say? That didn't come to you from men. Only my Father can open up your eyes. So I just cry out, Lord, open up their eyes that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And that's what happened to me when I was 19, man. It was like, I saw it. And, and, and I did a 180 because I saw it. There was a conversion that happened. So I pray that way for people. And then this next one's pretty cool, too. The door opened, right? And 2 Corinthians 2.12 and Colossians 4.3. You know what they say? Paul's asking people to pray for him that God would open up a door for him to share the message. So I pray all the time, Lord, open up a door, more doors for our church. Give us platforms to share Christ. Then I say, Father, open up doors for all of our members. Open up doors of opportunity as they walk through life to be able to share the gospel. And here's what I learned. When I pray this way, guys, uh, it, it just increases my capacity. I just, it's hard not to think about people coming into the kingdom because you just prayed about it, right? And when I know uh, what's at stake, I just, I just want to see folks come to Christ. And now let me give you two tips. You ready? Here, here's tip number one, guys. Um, we make room for salvation when we display salvation. Uh, that means just showing people the love of God as we walk through life. And if you're like me, there's some days when I'm really grumpy, you know, and, uh, and I just, we're all human, right? And, and, and some days where, uh, you know, I, I, I don't do as well as others. And just the other day, by, well, by the way, just the other day, uh, Gina turns the news on and she blames me for getting upset. And, and uh, so the news was on and I just got upset at something I heard. And she goes, honey, you're making my stomach sick. And I go, well, you turned it on. I mean, it's not my fault. And, and uh, so some days we, we can be grumpy. We're all human, right? In one way or another. And, and yet the Bible says that through our lifestyle, people can see Christ. Listen to Matthew 5, 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. It could be us corporately as a church in our community. It's us also as individuals. Verse 15. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. It gives light to all who are in the house. Verse 16, your light must shine before people in such a way. Here's how you shine your light, right? That they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So when people see God's love, compassion, acceptance, uh, good works of any kind, when they see that come out of us, it's causing them to be ripened and, and, and to accept Christ. So I'll tell you a Joe story. This is off, hot off the press. Happened a couple of weeks ago. Um, I had to run to the grocery store later at night. It was ready to close. And I wanted to make my smoothie for the next day, and I needed a couple ingredients. So I'm standing in line, and there's three or four people in front of me and a couple people behind me. But the, the dear person at the register, um, she was talking to everybody, like personal things about their life, which I'm like, come on now. I, we just came to ring up and go, right? And, and, uh, uh, and, and, and then she's talking with her hands. So every time she talks, she, she stops and she wasn't even Italian. It's like, only oh, Italians do that, right? And, and, uh, and so I'm really frustrated. And, and then there's two people in front of me. And then there's one. And here's what I thought. When I get up there, I'm going to coach her. And you know what coaching is. It's code for I'm going to tell her off in a nice way. And so <laughs> I'm going to coach her. And yet now there's even more people behind me. And I get up there, and I want to coach her so bad. And then I just, in my, in my heart, I just, I, I just, the Holy Spirit just said, don't coach her, Joe. Don't coach her. <laughs> And I just knew God didn't want me to coach her. So I didn't coach her. I was so proud of myself. And so when we're all done, and she just talked and talked, and she finally gets me the receipt. Here's what she said. She goes, she didn't acknowledge she, that she knew who I was until that moment. She says, by the way, Pastor Joe, I love your show. It's really, it's really a blessing to me. And I'm like, I am so glad I didn't coach that woman. Um, I do live in a glass house in this community, so I can only be mean in grocery stores out of town, right? So... Uh, <laughs> all right, we make room for salvation when we display salvation. Guys, 
We impact people. People's lives are changed, especially if they know you go to a, a church like ours or they know you accepted Christ. It's just good with your relatives. Be as sweet as you can. Be as sweet as you can. And then this last one's important too. We make room for salvation when we share salvation. And th there has to come a time, just like if you're a salesperson, where you close the deal, right? And I like to say it this way, 1 Peter 3, 15. Quietly trust yourself to Christ your Lord and be uh, and if anybody asks why you believe as you do, be ready to tell him and, and do it in a gentle and respectful way. So what is he saying to do? Look for doors of opportunity. And we live in a world, guys, I'm telling you, there are so many hurting people and there's so much question. People will just say things that you, you just say, oh, I can segue into this. I can, I can tell them about church or about Jesus, right? You know, that kind of thing. So he says, look for those opportunities. The only time I don't do that, I did it with my grandma's. But if I'm on a plane, I'm like, I'm never gonna see you again, so I'm coming at you hard and strong, right? And that's just my personality, and I'm aware where they're going if they don't know Jesus. So first thing I do is I say, I'm a preacher, and I watch how they react, right? And, 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 and then I just try to bring it to, what, what, do you, what have you done with Jesus, right? And I just figure I might be one of the laborers one of their relatives prayed would come and talk to them. So, but other than that, when I'm rubbing shoulders every day, and I, I'm... I'm on some, some committees and boards in the community. I rub shoulders with uh, people that wouldn't know Christ, and, but I'm always waiting. I'm looking for that opportunity, and I'm living the life. And so some of you might say, but I, 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 I'm not sure how to share Jesus, and, and I'm not a real bold person. Guys, that's okay. Uh, ask God to give you more grace, but, but you know what? You can invite him to church, I promise you. If you invite them to church, at the end of every service, I will let them know about Jesus, right? So it's just to say, come to church. Pastor Joe is really fun, and he's funny. We have incredible worship, right? And all the people are so sweet and nice. You'll love, just come visit. Do me, do me one favor. Come one time. Come visit. And, and just get them into, into the building, and I promise you, uh, I'll share Christ with them too. And it's the most amazing thing. It, it really doesn't matter what subject I teach on. Um, this year was the craziest year. Do you know we had more people accept Christ when I taught on tithing and generosity than on Easter? We had a landslide. It was like, how did this many, and it's like, I was like in shock. Like I just talked about being generous with your money and, and, and I do the altar call and all these hands go up and I'm like, you know what? It's, it's the power is in the gospel, right? And God just brought a bunch of right people that weekend and it was amazing. So I don't know about you, but I'm excited about what God can do and what God does. I'm excited that God wants our loved ones in heaven more than we do. I'm excited that God gave us this powerful thing called prayer. I'm excited, guys, that we know the, the, the other side of eternity, which causes us to just open up. And I'm excited that we can love people and we can help ripen them and then share Christ with them. Can we just take a moment, give it up, say thank you, Jesus, for what you've done, what you're doing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm excited. Every time we do water baptisms, it's just so exciting to watch people say, hey, I'm going to go public with my faith. Can we pray? Let's bow our heads, close our eyes. Father, I did my best to share this part of the Bible. And, Lord, we thank you for our salvation. Thank you so much. And, Lord, we thank you for, by your grace, opening up our eyes and growing our capacity. Help us become more aware of what's at stake. Help us become more aware, Lord God, of this thing called prayer and how it can change people forever. Thank you, Lord God, so much. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Listen, maybe you're listening. You say, Pastor Joe, I walked in not even believing in God or Pastor Joe, I go to church, but I'm sitting here saying, I can't remember a day when I prayed and said, Jesus, I accept you as my savior, but my eyes are open. I believe that. I'm ready today to pray. Would you pray with us right now? Everybody listening in Borman, online, uh, TCI here in Warren. And can we help them pray, guys? Just let's help them. Say this after me. Uh, say, Lord God, I realize I was born sin-stained and I need a Savior. And this day, I repent of my sins and I look up to Jesus. Jesus, I believe you're the son of God who always existed, came to earth to save mankind. I believe, Jesus, you died for our sins. God raised you out of that grave. I accept you as my savior. And I make a decision today to follow you. 
Amen. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, uh, miracles happen. Miracles, miracles, miracles happen. It's just the most amazing thing. God saved your soul. It's, it's amazing. And now you can continue to follow Jesus, become one of his disciples, be water baptized. But you know what else is happening? If you prayed that prayer, all of heaven is rejoicing. And we want to join heaven. So heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I'm not going to ask you to stand. I'm not going to ask you to get out of your seats. But can you let us know, Borman here in Warren, TCI, and I'll tell you what to do online. If you prayed that prayer, can you let us know by simply raising your hand? You say, Pastor Joe, that's me. Our ushers are going to bring you a Bible. It's a free gift. And they're coming right now to deliver them to you. Hey, Pastor Joe, I prayed that prayer. They're looking in Borman. Congratulations, guys. I accepted Jesus. Congratulations. And if you're watching online and you prayed that prayer, all you have to do is type the word believe or text the word believe to the number on the screen and we will send you a free Bible. So we're going to look one more time. Pastor Joe, I didn't raise my hand, but I should have raised my hand. Let's go ahead. Congratulations, guys. We're happy for you. Thank you. Everybody can look up. And guys, I talked about water baptism. We'll do it again in a month. So if you haven't been water baptized, sign up to be water baptized. Also, we have this thing here called Connect Groups. And it's how you uh, uh, literally find out what you're called and your giftings are. And it's how you make an impact in this world. And if you want to uh, become more of an impact, find out how to be involved here at Believers, you, you go through Growth Track. So that happens here at Believers on Sundays during second service in Boardman here in Warren. You can jump in at any time. So if you want to sign up, go to the iPads on the green wall and you can sign up. Guys, I've had a blast. I'm going to go greet. We're going to switch over. Our MCs are coming to close service down. While they do, can we give it up for everybody to accept Christ? Let them know and hear what's happening in heaven. Well, hey, my name is Sophia. I get to be a part of the team here at BC. And right now we just want to take a moment to welcome any of our first time visitors. So if this is your first time here with us, we're so thankful. We're so excited that you're here and we want to honor you. We've got a few free gifts that we'd love to get into your hands. The first one is this little BC travel mug. And the second one is this packet here. And inside of this, you're going to find some music from our band. There's a special message from Pastor Joe called No Perfect People Allowed, which is really the heart behind BC. So we would love to get these gifts into your hands. So all you got to do is just head to the West Lobby. That's right through like these back doors here and you should see a bright green wall. Our guest services team will be there and they would love to help you out with anything that you need and answer any questions that you have. And if you're watching online, we're so excited that you're here too. And we want to connect with you. So make sure you text VIP to the number on the screen so we can reach out to you. We wanted to let you guys know that August 28th, a week from today, we're actually going to be delivering beds to students in our community who don't have um, beds to sleep on. So we had a day a few weeks ago where we, we built these beds, but now we actually get to go to their homes and deliver them. So if you're interested in getting involved, all you got to do is just head to the West Lobby. There'll be a table out there with more information. And we also are going to have our trained altar workers up here. They're, they're going to pray with you if you need prayer for any area of your life. And I think that's everything. So can we just thank our God for what he's doing here today in this place? Can we just thank him this morning? Just give him some love. <laughs> All right, we love you guys so much. Have the best day, have the best weekend.